Hello, I'm Chris Slisher, and welcome to Turning of the Wheel, an intelligent, lively discussion about astrology, art, and spiritual adventure. Timing is everything, and as the great wheel turns, we are best prepared when we are best informed. Join me as I explore concepts that allow us to broaden our view of the world. You'll hear interesting topics, meet fascinating guests, and discover who you really are. Using the time-tested practices of astrology, you'll learn how to accept change as the great wheel of life turns. Astrology, art, and spiritual adventure on Turning of the Wheel TV with Chris Flisher. Hello and welcome to Turning of the Wheel. My name is Chris Flisher. As you know, this is a show about astrology, art, and spiritual adventure. And spiritual adventure allows me to cast a very wide net over the subjects and the topics in which I love to investigate. One of those topics I love to investigate is the Tarot deck. And the Tarot deck has a long history of being a predictive tool, being an indicator of what people are about, what may be happening in their lives. And I've got a wonderful guest on today. Her name is Jean Mayo, and she is a person who I came to understand through the Tarot. And it's been great to have her on today. She has her own practice, JeanMayo.com, a fabulous website I encourage you to check out. And we're going to be talking today about the intuitive power of the Tarot. So Jean, welcome to Turning of the Wheel. Great to have you on today. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Glad to be and here. So it's fun because Tarot to me, as I was growing up as a child, thousands of years ago, <laughs> I had this impression that something about it didn't quite make sense. I said, well, you've got all these cards out there, and what is making me pick a card, or the person who's reading the cards, what's making that person pick the card over another card? And isn't there a sense of randomness there? And then I said, well, you pick a card, you, put, you turn it over, it's such and such, and then you can interpret that card any way you want. But I know that it's far more involved than that. I am not a tarot reader, I'm an astrologer, mm -hmm. but there is synergy between the two. And I'm wondering how you feel about that, how do you explain that sort of random quality? Right. Well, there are two parts, really, to reading the cards. One is the totally non-random quality of how you react when you see an image. Mm -hmm. And that is a whole subject in and of itself. But that's not what you really asked. You asked, well, is there an accident or not with which cards pop up? And I would say, no, there is not. I am, I am actually a very hard-headed person uh, with a science background mm -hmm. and um, quantum physics and also the whole field of mindfulness, which is ancient and is sweeping the country now, is all about accessing energy through your senses. Oh, interesting. So, and intuition is all about accessing knowledge through your senses, not through the hard brain of your head that has all that data that um, involves logic and rational thinking. We are not picking cards using that. We're using our hands. We're using something that is really a big mystery. It's invisible to all of us, and it will always be a mystery. But there is some indication in quantum physics that, uh, that it's quite possible for us to know things, feel things, do things that we can't logically understand. Can't quite explain. So that yeah. when you do a spread of cards and your hand goes towards a certain <laughs> card, you think that that has got some sense of, uh, I mean, supposing somebody changes their mind at the last minute, then that would be... That's also intuitive. That's it's also just intuition. <clears throat> it's just, and what is intuition? It's something that we access through our senses, mostly. And, and our senses are the present moment connection to energy in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. And so something's going on that causes us to pick those cards. And then there is something else that goes on that I see all the time with students. Because I work with students, I'm teaching them, and so you watch how it works, mm -hmm. and you see people activate, active in groups. And one of the things that happens is once you pick the card and you look at it, your eye, which is your eyes, which is your visual sense, um, gets into a part of your brain, it simulates a part of your brain that isn't about memory so much. It isn't about data, mm -hmm. it isn't about logic. It's that instantaneous creative force that um, we all have access to. As much as we have memory and science back information, we also have a, a instant knowledge of everything at once. It's an instant synthesis. It's is much it, a, is yeah. it intuition? Yes, it's <laughs> intuition. It's also the same thing that creativity comes from. Ah, and it's the same so force. Spark. It's a spark of, of uh, seeing the whole picture at once. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you do that is that's when a lot of the real information is coming to you. 
um, the real sense of no knowing, a kind of extraordinary knowing that happens. This is what people would call sort of a gut feeling. When you have you follow yeah. your gut, sort right. of that instinct right. about sort of <clears throat> this is just the way it feels. You can almost feel that. This feels right. This feels wrong. And gut feeling, which is again, <coughs> that's your senses again. Yeah. It's operating in your nervous system. Your gut is your enteric nervous system has 100 million neurons in it. It's the second brain. It is extremely sensitive to what's going on in the present Stimuli. moment. That's yes, and there are people who, um, there, there's in the literature, there are people who have made gut decisions and done very, very well with it, including financial decisions, mm -hmm. but also life and death decisions. So this is something we all have that we need to use more of, because in our civilization, the way we have evolved, we've ha leaned heavily on science, which is good, we can't live without science, it's great, it's helped us, but it isn't enough. Intuition is really, well, there's a famous quote that goes around the internet that's attributed to Albert Einstein, but it isn't really Albert Einstein who said it. Nobody knows who said it. But it says that intuition is the guide and science is the, the servant. In oh, other words, use your intuition. Sense. And there are many famous scientists. Jonas Salk is one who, and, and um, um, who was the Apple Steve innovator. Jobs? Yeah, Steve Jobs wrote about it as well, and Albert Einstein wrote about intuition, that mm -hmm. he got his ideas from this instant moment knowing, huh. and then he spent his life trying to prove that this was all so true. So you think that each of us has the ability to, uh, to exercise this muscle, so to Absolutely. speak, this, this sense of intuition. We all yes. have the ability to be intuitive. It's just a matter of us sort of tuning those antenna. Correct. I mean, we have this ability because yes. I've, I've oftentimes acted on my gut, and I've been proven happy to be happy that I did. Yes. And uh, and I think usually that's usually what you should always follow. That's sort of your inner self saying right. this is right or this is wrong. I think it's important to be able to follow that. But you say that we can we can exercise that muscle. Yeah. Um, in fact, children come with it very naturally because they don't have a lot of data in right. their heads when they're born. The and, um, and they're very intuitive and amazing things come out of the mouths of children. But um, it gets, unless you're in the creative arts, you know, like musicians are very intuitive and artists are very intuitive. Writers, fiction writers work very intuitively. But unless you've been practicing creativity, which is using that instant moment gut feeling of um, just meandering through your thinking in a way that is, uh, you, you, it's not necessarily logical. Un unless you've been yeah, exercising that and you've gone through the education system in this country, you're apt to not be very intuitive and you can get it back. It's a muscle that we haven't used and we need it. We need it badly right, right now, more than ever, because the earth right now, the way we are is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of data and uh, to back up, uh, tell us what to do next. And so it's particularly important for or, us to be more intuitive right now. what the problem might be is that we are using the data to tell us what to do now <laughs> and the data is not correct, correct? I mean, that's... It's, well, it can't predict something that's different. It can only predict what's already happened. Mm -hmm. And so that part of the brain, the I call it the hard drive part of the brain with right. all the data in it and then the little s software that tells you, oh, this is what worked before, let's, let's make it work now. Um, it won't tell you anything to do when you're in a totally new situation. So, and we're in a totally new situation. Yes, sci it's good to know history and, and science, but basically the, we are not going full circle. We move in a spiral. We're moving circular, but right. forward. So, right. you know, this is an, a, a, something we need to have. It is something we can develop. And the tarot, the reason I love the tarot, partly it's just because I picked up a bunch of tarot cards once and I felt an instant kind of knowing when I looked at them. And maybe that's because I love art and I love, the, I love images, I love beauty. But it also is probably because we use our eyes more than any other sense. So it's the easiest way to become instantly intuitively. Mm -hmm. and, and it works really well. And it also seems as if the time now, we are in a time now whereby we are in many ways pulled by data because of our devices and stuff <laughs> like that. They sort of uh, get in the way of this, the, what, what could be potentially a very strong, powerful psychic stream that could be coming through to us, some sort That's of a, an intuitional, intuitional electricity that could be coming through. We might be ignoring that because of 
the amount of chatter in us. So it is important. Yeah. And I think one of the things we had talked about earlier was that the way to sort of um, hone in on this muscle, to exercise this muscle, to go to the psychic gym, for lack of a better word, would be to uh, find more time to meditate and, and sort yeah. of block out that chatter, because that yeah. chatter can be incredibly distractive. Right. Distracting. No, I mean, I meditate every day. Mm -hmm. I take walks in the woods with my little dog and get myself in a meditative state. And I do my best readings. I have a website that predicts the future and is highly popular, and I do most of those future predictions while I'm on meditation retreats because my mind just gets so clear and so focused on the present moment. Mm. When you're using the tarot, it's funny, I don't have to meditate to be good with the tarot because as soon as I lock on to an image, everything starts to flow. And so that is really a special gift that the cards offer. But when you're, when I also do a lot of reading just in my own psyche, just without the cards, mm -hmm. really important reading. And I find that I, I have to meditate. I also, before I give a reading, I have the client and I both meditate briefly meditate to briefly. clear our heads so we can actually access the present moment energy of this world mm -hmm. right now, not just our world, but the, this whole world. Right, right, because we are sort of, we are part of a collective pool. I believe that we are all connected in some way between yes. this, there's sort of this f pool of water beneath us all that we all have our toes in. And it becomes <laughs> part of our, you know, sort of the, what I would call the collective subconscious, obviously. That's all part of our thing. And I think that we are doing ourselves a disservice by not being able to tap into that because of all these distractions. So these distractions uh, create way too much static and chatter in the way. And your comment about the time moving forward is the same comment I use when I talk about astrology all the time, which is time yeah. is a helios. Right. Things do recur, but they always are going down the stream further so that we are always in a perpetual motion of, of time moving forward. Things may recur. And it's from that collective data, that collective pool of knowledge that gets larger every second that goes by. We've got more empirical data that substantiates that. And I think I would say in some ways probably becomes a psychic database for us if we're willing to tap into it. Yeah. The secret is knowing how to tap into it. The question I ask for you is that when you do a tarot reading, when a client, when a client comes to you, yep. do you find yourself uh, putting the cards out and having the person pick the card or do you pick the card for the person based on the question they ask? Well the old way, the sort of handed down way, is that you have the other person pull the cards. I don't because I started reading back when my kids were babies and I didn't want people coming to my house. Um, so, and I didn't really want to go to an office, so I started reading on the phone and they couldn't pick the cards. Right. So now I'm in the habit of doing it myself. And mm -hmm. really, it, these are all like rituals and you can have your own rituals. There's no dogma here. There's no set way to do anything. So I read just the way it feels comfortable for me. And as long as I'm used to doing it that way, then I'm not distracted by doing it differently. Because when you do something differently, it's distracting. You it's start distracting. to think, oh, this is weird. This yeah, is different. Right. So I shuffle the deck myself. I have a whole routine where I meditate with the person. I ask the person. Now, the thing about having people actually shuffle the cards, the, the client and having the client pick them, is that you're getting the client involved. The person who's getting the reading is involved. I involve people by asking them before the reading to say a prayer and invite whoever they feel is helping them on the other side, or if they don't believe in that, just to invite the energies of the universe in to guide them and send guidance to me to help them and to themselves. I also ask them to make a wish, which I think helps because mm -hmm. it means that they're focused on something good, yeah, something good for yeah, themselves. Interesting. So I just get them involved in that mm -hmm. way. Do you think that, um, that if people do, do not do this or they choose, they choose not to go down this path, that they are doing themselves a disservice. Is there information here that is for a person's individual greater good? And by not by by avoiding that sort of route, are they shortchanging themselves in some way by not living up to their full potential? Do you mean by avoiding the route of getting a reading? Or? Yes. Yeah. I mean by not tapping into the sort of the intuitive, uh, by not honing your in, your intent. Right. Are we then right. doing ourselves a disservice because we're not really maximizing our real potential? Well. Absolutely, and at the same time, I want to say there are a lot of people who do not believe in any of this stuff, they, but they're very intuitive people. 
extremely oh, intuitive okay. people. Okay. And so they do fine without going in this direction consciously. Unconsciously is what's going, is where intuition is. I, I, I absolutely believe that we wouldn't even be here today as a species if it weren't for intuition. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we would have known, you know, a thousand to ten thousand years ago or twenty thousand years ago where, um, which direction to take our families, where the food's going to be, where the weather will be okay. I, I think we've always needed intuition, these are sort of but we didn't necessarily use these tools. Right. And there are a lot of very intuitive people, like I mentioned Jonas Salk and Steve Steve Jobs, I don't know if those people ever went to psychics. I know Ronald Reagan was really big on, on astrology, but well, that was more Nancy, I think. Oh, yeah. Nancy, right. But but I, I would say that there I know people who are extremely intuitive who don't actually go out and learn how to do this. However, I also know for myself, I was very intuitive growing up, and I was trained in the schools to learn about facts. And once I started going with learning these skills, these arts, the intuitive arts, I have become to, at the point now where my intuition is operating full blast 24 seven. Mm. And I feel, I just feel more aware of, and, and I also notice that I know things and then I watch those things happen. And so I feel like I'm in the right place at the right time. Right. It has helped me enormously. Yeah. <laughs> would you call um, would you call intuition a variation of instinct or a subset yes. of instinct? Sort oh, of? for sure. Because you mentioned earlier, sort of this fight or flight, the where do we go to find food? How do we get shelter? All those things t uh, sort of tie into our basic animal primal instincts. And in our primal instincts, we have that literal instinct, and, and the intuition tells us whether to go or whether not to go. It's the same reason that our bodies say, don't get too close to the edge of the cliff, we know something's wrong there. Um, you know, we sort of have that built-in safety device, safety mechanism. So in many ways, intuition is, comes, comes with the package, so to speak, yeah. comes with the software that we're, we're, we're born with. And sure. it's up to us whether to step into it and acknowledge it. But do you believe that our lives are richer and more better, uh, better informed if we are more immersed in this type of oh, knowledge sure. and being more aware of what the potential is? Because in astrology, which you know, I think astrology and tarot have got a lot in common. They're both ancient modalities that rely on sort of time and place and uh, and circumstances. Do you think that they have the ability to, when working together, we look at these longer term trends? There's a place. There's a time to be in the right place. You know, like I, I always right. say, timing is everything. Obviously, right. there's a place. There's a time and place to be in the right spot. Right. And do the cards sort of help? point you in that direction? Definitely. Or would you be Definitely. there otherwise without the cards? Definitely. No. Well, um, I use both the cards and I also use just intuition mm -hmm. straight from being in the present moment from mindfulness. And so the two together, they work together and they're part of each other because the cards is just a part of of intuitive mindfulness really using your eyes and also using ancient wisdom. The cards, the nice thing about the tarot is that it does have the imagery of ancient gods and goddesses, and my particular deck has different religions. It's Hindu and Tibetan and Egyptian, as well as Greek and Roman. And so you're accessing not only through your eyes, you're accessing in intuition or a connection to the present moment, mm. but also it's like a book. It's like a book of wisdom. Right. And so you can choose to learn this, these, these images in the book, and then you're gonna get all the stories that go with it, and that's wonderful. But the thing I love also that I, I hadn't mentioned was the interconnectivity of the whole universe and how intuition puts you directly in connection with everyone and everything that's alive, even things that you don't think of as alive, like trees and rocks, all the trees are very much alive. But it, the interconnectivity is what is so exciting. When you pick up a card and you read a person, or if you decide I'm gonna read somebody far, far away, or even somebody in the future, or even a whole group of people, there is this instant connection with them that we all have, because we are all one. And that is also science, that is quantum physics as well, that we are all connected connected instantly. And this process puts you in touch with that connection. So not only does it raise your wisdom and your understanding, because you feel what everyone else is feeling if you focus on those people. You feel right. it. But also, 
it feels good. We are meant to be connected. It's, it's called love. It's called loving everything and everyone, and it's a wonderful feeling. So, and if you think about it, logistically, yeah. how could we not be anything other than that? We're on this same swirling ball right, right. flying through the universe. <laughs> yeah. It's the same damn sandbox. Yeah. We're all in the same sandbox or the same swimming pool together. And I think that, that that speaks to me in a much larger context, which I love, because I think it allows, if people can get their heads into this mindset, it allows us to uh, exude far more tolerance and allows us to yes. exhibit, um, you know, forgiveness perhaps is a much better, you know, we are flawed as well, we all know that, we all have our flaws, but by the same token, that's part of the duality of nature. And I think that Carl Jung in particular was probably the one person who really sort of honed in on this yeah. as a way of, of sort of pu putting out the idea of this sort of collective subconscious that we're all part of this pool and we're all drawing on this same thing. And it is, to me, I find yeah. it to be fascinating and very validating, I think, with regard to, it gives me hope for humanity, it gives me hope for the mistakes that we made, make, make, or are making. Yeah. Uh, it gives me hope for, because I see it as a sort of a, a swinging of a tide, of a pendulum. We are going from one extreme to the other, and then there's always these variations in between. This is this sort of the dualistic nature of life. And I think that by tapping into resources such as the tarot and our intuition, we are able to be more in line with where that arc is, on the, where we are on that arc of the pendulum. Okay. Yeah. Well, a connection, you know, it's a, it's, it's what life is and life force. Yeah. And so when we think more about ourselves as connected to everyone else and everything else, like the trees and the animals and, and as well as each other, um, we're participating in what life force is. Yeah. It's one, we're one. We breathe together, we, 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 we feel each other. And when we are separate, when we feel separate, not only does it feel bad, not only does it feel hurtful to us, but it's not correct. Mm -hmm. We aren't separate. And so we're lying if we try to like cut other people off. And, and in a way, and we know that we're not, we know that we're in a sense lying, that we're not correct, it's not accurate. And so that leaves a kind of tension inside of us. Right. So, you know, it, it all goes back to love. It all goes back to those who espouse love. You know, the, the great wise people of the world have said that and are saying it now, that love is the only, it's the, the really, the only force love is the answer. that there is. And, mm -hmm. and so, and this, it, it, it sounds funny to say that, but when, when I first started looking at a tarot card and we had new people over for dinner once, some a friend of ours brought some strangers to dinner, I used to always feel a little uptight with strangers. This is a little tension, like, oh, who are they? And what do they think? And are they different? And so she said, oh, Jean's good with the cards. See if she can read you. So I wasn't doing it professionally, but I flip a card and instantly I could feel that person. I could feel their story as if they were my own sister or brother or son or daughter. And my heart would open and this, I feel, is a natural process that is an intuitive process. And it's, it's, a, it's a miracle, actually. And it's, it's life force. So it's good for us. I think it is good for us. I think <laughs> absolutely good for us, I think, in many ways. And I think that the, the ability for us to tap into that is, yeah. it does speak to the greater uh, connectivity that we have. I think, uh, I mean, there, and as I mentioned earlier, I mean, how could it be any other way? We didn't, we were not imported here. But when you look at this, um, when we're talking about the collective subconscious, do you think that the, that the collective subconscious in this case is cumulative? Are we a composite or a byproduct of what has gone on before us? I would think we would be. I feel, um, I can just use my intuition to answer that more than anything else. I remember once um, in 1990, the Harvard Crimson called me up because I was, had been a student there and they knew, they saw that I was working as a psychic. And they called me up and said, what's gonna happen in the economy of the 90s, right? And I, and uh, so I thought to myself, oh, I'm gonna have to read the Massachusetts and the US economy. And I thought, oh, that's like a whole group of people. So, okay, I'll try that. So I, cl I hung up the phone, I said, I'll call you back. I closed my eyes and I went, Massachusetts, Massachusetts economy. And an Indian, a Native American chief showed up inside my mind. And I thought, oh my God, the land that, I, that my house is on is, was native land. It belonged to them. They're still here. It was, their consciousness was still here. And then, you know, I mean, 
they were here for tens of thousands of years. We've been here for how many? Like 400? Um, so it makes sense that their energy, their thoughts were there. The other thing I would say and as a way of proof is we do this process called psychometry. I do it in all my classes because it's fun and exciting. And I have the students bring in heirlooms from their parents and grandparents. And we hide what we brought from each other and we pass them around and we put our hands on them and read them and write down what we got. And the interesting thing about psychometry is that we will see the lives of the people who lived 100 years ago in these objects like the wedding ring or a glove that they owned, we will see, I will see actual stories of their lives. And then we share those stories with each other and the people who brought them in will validate. Mm. And it, it, it tells me so much. It tells me that basically everything, every object has in it the energy of consciousness, of human consciousness, mm -hmm. and probably animal consciousness. Yeah, and, I think that's very and true. I think they've measured plants too, but yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, uh, to answer your question, everybody's here. We're all Everyone's here. Everyone's here from going way, way back. Right. And it's wonderful to open to it, really uh, wonderful to open to it. Oh, I think it is too. And, you know, I think that uh, the idea of, um, of, that of that sort of the connectivity from past is the same thing as mythology. If you look back at the ancient Greek yes. mythology, mm -hmm. the stories that were told then that were near, originated back then are the same stories we're telling now. It's just that we, you know, the same sort of struggles that man goes through, uh, the natural struggles, the evolutionary struggles, the intellectual struggles, the emotional struggles are all the same as they've always have been. It's just that they're down the road and the context has shifted. So instead right. of being in ancient Rome, we're in, in Boston or New York or Chicago or Los Angeles in 2017 or 2020. We are in, the stories are the same. It's how they're interpreted. And the, what changes is the context. So we can actually learn from history. And I think that the, the, the Tarot deck brings that to light by mm -hmm. serving as a guide for that, I think in some ways. And I'm curious real quickly, um, what, you know, in your morning routine, uh, do you ask a question when you, when, you're, when you sort of, does this sort of set the stage for your day? Well, actually what I do, I mean, I have my students who are trying to learn and get good at it. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell them to do card for a day and they get good really fast that way and pull a card in the morning for your day. I don't do that anymore because basically it's so infused in my whole being right, right. now. What I do now is when I wake up in the morning, I, I do a mindfulness meditation. Um, I'll take a walk and I'll tune in to nature. I actually, uh, sounds funny, but I'll actually ask trees now for information. I actually wow. go and put my hand on a tree and just read it as if I'm reading a person and say, well, what do you think? Not about my day, but about the world. How are you feeling? I'd say that my consciousness has shifted a lot away from my own individual life and is more focusing on the overall world. Oh, that's the community, yeah. That's yeah, a, that's yeah. A, that's an I'm important very interested piece. in the world and in, in the climate and in nature and where we're headed with that and how nature is, what they have to say, because they're sitting there all the time, the trees, for example, and, um, and we now know through science that yeah. the trees have a whole secret life that, that goes on that is something and and, like consciousness. And they're all connected, yeah. We're so, going to have you back on in, some, in the future to talk okay. about the idea of prediction and sort of how things are connected in that regard, but we are out of time. I want to thank you so much for being on today, Jean. It's been great. Jean Mayel is your name. Her website is jeanmayel.com. Psychic. Uh, astrologer, I mean, uh, a <laughs> tarot reader, and a marvelous uh, wealth of wisdom and, and spiritual goodness. So thank you so much. Thank you.